Doership is the third veil of the mind. It is a common notion that the results of our actions belong to us. We learn this from our parents, our teachers, friends, and colleagues. Our sense of success or failure is often dependent on it. For example, if you win an Olympic medal, it's because you had talent and worked hard. If you have many friends, it's because you treat people well. If your relationship fails, you are in some way to blame. And if your health deteriorates, it's because you didn't take care of yourself. Some prefer to call us human doers instead of human beings because we are so focused on results. In fact, we often define ourselves by our actions. Because doership is such a no-brainer explanation of how we should evaluate ourselves and others, few question it. In any case, let's have a closer look. Take a simple action like using a fork to eat some spaghetti. You pick it up off the plate, put it in your mouth and swallow. Simple, right? You recognize that eating the spaghetti is something you did. It didn't just jump off the plate, roll into a ball, and force its way into your mouth, right? <laughs> now look at this action from a broader perspective. How did the spaghetti get onto your plate in the first place? Well, if you're in a restaurant, somebody probably cooked it for you. Yet they couldn't cook it unless they had a stove, some pots, and utensils, which you didn't buy. Also, the cook just didn't appear in the kitchen from thin air. They were hired by someone. And where did the pasta and tomato sauce come from? Likely from factories with many employees and lots of machinery. The factories got the flour and tomato paste from wheat and tomato fields, which were harvested by people. And where did the field workers come from? <laughs> Their mothers, most likely. Women who had ancestors who can be traced to the first hominids and even further back to the origins of life on this planet. So the presence of the spaghetti overall had little to do with you. Neither did the fork for that matter. Its metals originated in Mother Earth. So how did you get the fork to your mouth? Your brain had to send signals to your motor cortex to move your arm and fingers. Well, how was that possible? Well, again, this capability arose after millions of years of evolution. In short, it's none of your business. So how did the decision to eat spaghetti come about in the first place? Well, perhaps you had pleasurable memories of eating spaghetti as a kid, and your stomach was gurgling with hunger. So how is it that memories and stomach hunger can initiate action? Well, humans have to eat, right? Otherwise they die. Perhaps, besides pasta pleasure, a subtle fear of stomach cramps or dying of hunger was present. The fear of hunger is again based on choices nature made over the course of the evolution of the universe. And if this universe is just one of many, who knows how it's all connected? In short, there are so many interconnected decisions not of your making that occurred at many levels which allowed you to eat spaghetti or drop it on the floor for that matter. And you want to take full credit for this? <laughs> In the same manner, we try to take full credit for our successes and failures in life. If you really look at the bigger picture, it's almost like none of our actions belong to us. Perhaps at best, we can say we made some choices. However, how many of our choices are conscious choices and not habitual? It appears the real doer in our lives is the universe, or whatever lies beyond it. That's a pretty hard pill for the ego to swallow, don't you think? <laughs> now this argument sounds like a loophole in society's call for social responsibility. In other words, if the source of action is not me and the results are not mine, then I can do whatever I want. You think the ego is going to give up that easily? <laughs> On the flip side is the argument that anything which occurs in my life is an act of grace something to be grateful for. In the first scenario, behaving selfishly is bound to result in suffering. In the second scenario, inner peace arises because it is based in selflessness. The sense of doership does have an upside, however. 
When we eventually realize the stress and pain it causes, the heavy yoke of always seeking results begins to lift. We learn to let go of our attachment to the results of our actions and appreciate just how blessed we truly are. Doership is associated with playfulness, which is a function of attention and reward. The reward is joy, while attention naturally goes with the flow. Whereas mindfulness brings wisdom and heartfulness purifies the will, playfulness uplifts our actions. When we give up our attachments to the results of our actions, we begin to pay attention to what lies in the moment. Unlike the playless person who takes themselves and the world so seriously, we become lighthearted. Humility and clarity permeate all our actions. Thank you so much for listening. Namaste.